Hello everyone, this is Arvind here from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to this amazing video on Denodo training. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at the agenda for today's session. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, these are the pointers that we will discuss in this video. First of all, we will understand what exactly is data virtualization, and then we will have a look at the reasons which will show us why do we need data virtualization. Then we will talk about the most important point of this session, which is what is Denodo and what are the benefits of data virtualization, or you can even say what are the benefits of Denodo as a tool. Okay, then we will talk about how does Denodo work, and then we will conclude this session by using a hands-on demo, wherein I will show you how does Denodo work and what are the components that are present in Denodo. Okay, and what at all you can do with Denodo. Okay, so the demo part will consist of right from the installation process, how to install Denodo, and then actually working with the tool. Okay, so this was all about the agenda for today's session. I hope everyone is clear with this. So before moving ahead, I want you guys to subscribe to MindMagic's YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from us. So without any further delay, let's get started. Okay, so what is a data virtualization? Let us understand what exactly is data virtualization. So before understanding data virtualization, let me give you a scenario. Okay, so suppose you're working for a company that has information about its customers, which is normally handled using, you know, uh, customer relationship management tools. And this information is stored in a, you know, SQL based database. Let's say, for example, it's stored in MySQL database. Okay, apart from this, the complete billing information for any customer is exposed in an internal web service. Okay, so these are the some of the assumptions in this scenario. The end users do not want to use different applications to get available information of customers, for example, CRM, sales application, and so on. Okay, and the IT department does not like the idea of creating a specific application for this particular business need, and it would like to reuse this customer global view, if possible, in any other current application. Okay, so this is a particular scenario which you might face and these kind of scenarios actually exist in the companies. Okay, if you talk about this particular scenario, the point here is that the end users do not want to use different applications to get all of the information of the customers. So the problem here is to connect disparate data to create a single view of the customers and the IT department wants that single view to be reusable. Okay, so if you follow a bad design, like if you do not reuse the existing components, like and if you create the ad hoc code or the applications, so your systems will grow as you can see in the image. Okay, so this is what your system will look like. Okay, so as you can see, this is not a clear image and this does not show how exactly the system is actually working. Okay, so there is a lot more confusion in this image. And this is the actual problem in the companies. Okay, so to solve this problem, we have this concept of data virtualization. So coming to the point of data virtualization. So what do you mean by data virtualization? So data virtualization creates a single virtual layer that connects disparate data and provides unified access for consuming the applications. Okay. And these applications will use the semantic components defined in the virtual layer and reuse them as and when needed. Okay, so what is the biggest benefit of this data virtualization? So the benefit is that your applications will be independent from the physical sources where the data is stored. Okay, so you no longer need to access the physical location of the data. Okay, so you can say that data virtualization is somewhere between the client and the actual data storage. Okay, so you can say that it acts as a middle layer. Okay, something in between. Okay, so data virtualization is a layer to combine real-time data from disparate data sources and make data available to any business without sharing the technical aspects. So what are those technical aspects? For example, data source, data structure, data center, database, and so on. Okay, so this was the definition of data virtualization. Okay, so now you must be wondering why at all do we need data virtualization? So data virtualization is a critical part of an organization and you cannot overlook its importance. We live in highly competitive times and therefore, if a business wants to thrive in such a cutthroat competition, 
they will have to do everything which is required to survive. OK, and data virtualization is one of those core elements which is necessary to survive in the market. OK, a business creates a lot of data, including the details of the customers, employees, history and much more. And analyzing these data silos can help an organization identify the flaws to take the necessary actions. OK, so apart from this, not only flaws, but also hidden opportunities are also present in the data. So therefore, the data analytics professional bag huge packages in the organization and their need is continuously growing. OK. In addition to that, data analysis cannot be done without data visualization. OK, so what is the reason for this? Because it will be very time consuming for the data analysts to do it. OK, and it can cost an organization a lot of time as well as money, so which they could have invested in some other important work operations. OK, and the biggest highlight of data virtualization is that you can reduce the data redundancies. OK, so this was the importance or you can say these are the various reasons by which you will understand why at all do we need data virtualization. OK, so now coming back to the most important part of this session. What is Denodo? OK, so Denodo is the latest product of Denodo Technologies, which is a software based company in the market. It is a freeware data virtualization utility with a GUI based studio. OK, so the Denodo Express integrates and connects unstructured big data and structured sources on site as well as in the cloud. OK, and end users can access those resources along with the dashboards, enterprise applications, intranet, portals and other tools. OK. So Denodo platform provides advanced performance in logical data warehouses, big data and operational strategies. It expedites adoption through cloud data virtualization. And it simplifies business users data using self service data searches and data discovery. So Denodo is the leader in data virtualization offering data governance, data access and data delivery abilities throughout the wide varieties of cloud enterprise unstructured and big data sources without transferring the data from their native repositories. What is the purpose of data virtualization? So we use data virtualization in everything from small projects that are in need of rapid data access or as a part of the data warehousing project or more extensive application to an enterprise level semantic or general data layer. OK, so Denodo as a tool is used across various verticals or you can say various domains such as banking, finance, social media, marketing, entertainment, big data and so on. So the data virtualization market is expected to reach 10.87 billion by 2027. Okay, so this was all about the tool Denodo. Okay, so I think you now have an idea of what exactly is Denodo. Okay, and now we will discuss the three key principles of Denodo. OK, and what are those three key principles? The first one is connect. The second one is combine and the third one is consume. OK, so I will explain you these three terms in the next part. And before moving to the working of Denodo, we should not miss the benefits of Denodo. OK, so what benefits Denodo has to offer us? OK, so as you can see on the screen, these are the various benefits of Denodo. The first one is easy to generate data services. OK, after that we have data services independent of the physical sources. I think I've highlighted this point in the definition part also. OK, and apart from this, the Denodo is a single point to control all of your data sources. Next, you have short and agile development cycles using Denodo. And for using Denodo, you require very minimal or no coding. OK, so a person who doesn't have any technical background can use Denodo. OK, the next point here is intuitive solutions to simple needs. And the last and the most important point here is reusability of all your models by the clients. OK, so these were some of the important benefits of Denodo. So let's move ahead. OK, so as we have discussed earlier, what are the three key principles of Denodo? And as you can see on the screen, these are the three principles connect, combine and consume. OK, so the image that you can see on the screen right now is the overall architecture or you can say the overall working of Denodo. OK, so now we are going to discuss the three principles. OK, so the first principle or the first point here is connect to disparate data sources. 
so what do you mean by that okay and just next to this you can see this layer okay so this layer is nothing but wide variety of data sources the connect layer allows upper layers to access the data from multiple repositories while insulating them from the complexities of the core communication protocols as well as formats so data virtualization connects to a variety of structured and unstructured data sources that includes databases big data systems streaming sources cloud repositories web no sql sources flat files and so on it employs customized connectors to connect a particular data repository or application and it converts and normalizes the data source types such that all the base views seem as relational views to the higher layers okay so this was all about the connect layer the next step here is the combine so what do you do in combine you combine related data into views okay so the combine layer uses a library of pre built templates and components to dynamically automate web integration process by modeling workflow navigation and extraction as well as the structuring of web semi structured and unstructured data it allows for the building of composite data views on the top of the connecting layers based perspective using logical operators for the purpose of data transformation okay so in this layer users can do complex data transformation metadata modeling data quality and semantic matching operations using sql and relational tools that they are already familiar with okay and the third and the most important layer in this architecture is the consume okay so consume the data in the business applications so the consume layer provides a single point of access to the underlying data sources as well as the abstracted data views in a uniform delivery style okay so how can you consume the data from this layer so you can do it using jdbc odbc ado.net soap web services restful web services and the output of the restful web services can be viewed as xml json html or rss apart from that you also have data widgets or you can have microsoft web parts to be implemented in sharepoint and you can also have exports to microsoft excel or sql server and the jms messages queues are all available at the consumer layer okay so this is the overall working of the denodo okay i hope you guys have an idea of all of the three layers that i've just explained okay so connect combine and consume so three key principles of denodo okay so let's move on to the next part okay so one of the most important point here is what is the difference between data virtualization and data warehousing okay so as we have discussed earlier both are very much closely related but they are not the same okay so there's a huge difference between them so what is that difference so the data warehouse is a process to collect manage and process big chunks of data to unearth or you can say to discover the meaningful insights from the data so data warehouse is the core of any business intelligence system because bi or business intelligence is created for data analysis purpose without data warehouses we will only have huge amounts of data without any real time insights so the next point that we are going to discuss is the difference between data virtualization and data warehousing okay so as we have discussed earlier in the scenario part i have mentioned that data virtualization is very much closely related to the data warehousing but they are not the same there is huge amount of difference between them so what exactly is the difference so if you talk about data warehousing so it is nothing but a process to collect manage and analyze huge amounts of data to discover meaningful insights out of them so data warehouse is the core of any bi or the business intelligence system because bi is created for the data analysis purpose so without data warehouse we will be left with huge amounts of data without any real time insights okay and now if you talk about data virtualization so this process can easily represent data in the data warehouses which is quicker than data warehouse it was created to produce quickly and timely insights to elevate users from the conventional way of accessing data such as the etl and the data storage process okay so this was the core difference between the data virtualization and data warehousing okay i hope you guys have a clear idea of what is the difference between them 
Okay, so I think we have covered enough of the theory part. Okay, and now let us deep dive into Denodo by having some hands-on experience. Okay. Okay, guys. So I, as I've already told you, we have covered enough of the theory part, and now we will switch to the demo part. Okay. So the first and foremost thing that we have to do is we have to download the Denodo. Okay. So download Denodo. If you Google search this thing, so the first link that appears seems to be that of official Denodo website. Okay. And here you can see, let me allow the cookies and here you can see download for free. Okay. So if you click here, we'll be navigated to another link. Okay. And from this page, you can download this. Like I'm using Windows operating system, so I can download this Windows 64 bit. So the size is pretty huge. I think it's 2.9 GB as written over here. Okay. So if you're using Linux, you can download this version. Okay. So this is the first step. As you can see here, it's written. Okay. So before that, before you have to log in. Okay. As you can see, I've log, uh, logged in here. Okay. And apart from this file, you also have to download the Denodo Express licenses. Okay. So you have to click here on download. And I've already downloaded it on my system. So I do not need to download it again. Okay. And the third step is the installation. Okay. So you can click on these links. Express Quick Start Guide. Okay. Okay. So as you can see here, once you click on that link, these are the things that you must follow. Denodo Express Architecture Overview. So what are the various components present in Denodo? Okay. Installation process is also mentioned here. Okay. So these are the four, four steps, as you can see here. And there's another link, Denodo Platform Installation Guide. If you click this, you can see this as well. And starting Denodo Express. Okay. So how do you start it? These are the steps that are mentioned here and the user credentials. So the default username and password for Denodo will be admin admin. OK, so we will see that. In very short time. OK, so let me go back to here and yeah. So once you download it and there are a few prerequisites. Before you move further. OK. So in this link that we just had opened in the previous step, so pre installation tasks, so you can verify the hardware software requirements. OK, and configure the server for Denodo platform and download the installer. OK, so apart from this, there are a few things that you must also download which are related to, let's say. You will need a MySQL database. OK, so a MySQL database. Of anything like the latest version, if I'm not wrong, it's 5.0. So at least 5.0 and onwards version you need on your system for MySQL. OK, and you also need Denodo tutorial files. OK, so tutorial files. You can get it from. Let me show it here installation guide. OK, so there's one file which is called the. Denodo tutorial files which you need. OK, so if I go here. In my download download section, I have. Downloaded it. OK, so this is the thing that I've downloaded Denodo tutorial files. OK, and. Uh, apart from this, you need a MySQL workbench. OK. So what is the use of MySQL Workbench? So these are the helpful tools that we may use in MySQL and we also need a MySQL connector. So how do you download it? So download. MySQL. For Windows, OK. 
So this is the MySQL installer. Okay, so for this Windows, I'm so sorry. So let me just go back and download MySQL Workbench. Okay, so the first link here is that of MySQL Workbench and you can download it as you can see here for Windows. 42.7 MB, you can download it from here. Okay, and after that, you have to download MySQL connector, JDBC connector. Okay. So basically, this is a jar, jar file. Okay. And we will need it. Okay. So as you can see here, this is the connector. And if you go to downloads page, you can download it for like if you are having web community you can download it this one and for installer community you can download this version okay so i have downloaded both the files on my system okay and once you do that okay so you install it on your system the like uh, if you the first thing that you must do after the downloads. So what you must do is you must create a separate directory. Like in my case, in this D drive, I've created a directory called Denodo. Okay. And this was the file that you have, which is a roughly 3.9 GB. Okay. And this is a zip file and I've extracted it. Okay. And oh, let me go back. Okay. So this was the zip file and this is the extracted folder. Okay. So once you do that, just have to click on the application install here. Okay, so once you double click here, the application gets installed. Okay, and since I've already downloaded it on my system and you just have to log in using the credentials admin admin. Okay, and this is once you do that, you will get this kind of user interface. Okay, so the first and foremost thing that you must do is you must click on this virtual data port. Okay, and here the virtual data port server and the port number is 9999. Okay, so here is it's running as of now. So you can initially it will be start here like uh, the display will be start. You have to just click on that and you have to click on launch. Okay. So the virtual data port server will get launched and this looks something like this. Okay, so here the admin database and the IT pilot are the default databases which are present here. Okay. And like if you have to start a new project in this Denodo, so what you must do is you must create a new database. Okay, so for, for creating a new database, what you must do is you must click on Okay, so before doing that, let me explain the components which are present in this. Okay, so this area which is known as the elements tree. Okay, so this area will display a tree with the different components generated in the database. Okay, and this is the menu bar. Okay, as you can see here, if I click on file, there are various options you have here. Okay, so file new, you can create a new folder, you can connect to a database or uh, sorry, you can connect to the data source. Then you have stored procedures, joins. Okay, so all the operations that you can perform with the data, there they are present here. Okay, and then you have export database, export, import. Okay, and the next tab is that of administration. Okay, so here you can create a new database. You can configure the server, resource manager, metadata, database configuration. Okay, the next section is that of tools there are, these are the various tools that are present here okay as you can see here vql shell query monitor catalog search okay and the last section is that of help okay so if you want to read the official documentation you can click over here okay then you have functions list as well and then you have success resources okay so this is the menu bar and this is our workspace 
so it is a primary panel where the chosen element from the open views and elements tree will be displayed okay and apart from this you have you have this quick search tab over here so this section filters particular elements from the elements tree okay so if you want to search any particular folder let's say this folder so you can type it over here and you will be navigated to that folder okay so this was all about the user interface of denodo okay and as i've already told you the best way to start a new project is create click on administration click on database management and here you have to click on database okay so you just have to name the database over here so let's say for example sample db okay so just name your database and click on uh, so rest of the things are by default so let's not change them okay and let's click on okay okay so this is the sample database okay so here what you can do is you can create a new folder okay so basically the denodo follows a specific nomenclature for this purpose okay so how what is the nomenclature for denodo so let me just show you okay so the nomenclature of denodo is divided into layers okay so what are those layers the, those layers are data source base view derived view and web service okay so based on this nomenclature we will create few folders here so the first one will be data source okay next you will create a another folder which will be called base view okay so this nomenclature will be common to every project okay after that we will create another folder and this will be derived view okay and the last folder will be that of web service okay so you can also connect to web services for fetching the data like you can use apis for fetching the data from multiple sources so that is the purpose of this web service okay so we have created these four folders for our database which is nothing but sample db okay and now what you have to do so as i've already told you in the previous part in the theory part there are that there are three principles that denodo follows okay so the what are those three principles connect the first one is the connect okay the second one is known as the combine okay and the third principle is that of consume okay so let's quickly have a look at how these things work in denodo okay so the first step is that of connecting to the data source so how do you connect to data sources so you can see this folder that we just created data source so right click on this and in the new section you have this data source okay so we have just downloaded in the, from in the installation part we have downloaded a mysql jdbc connector okay so you can use that connector apart from this you have multi dimensional db you have delimited file okay you have json you have ldap xml is also there salesforce is there excel web service odbc so these are the various types of data sources that you can connect okay using denodo okay so denodo is not only limited to just structured data like sql data like you know you they have data in the form of rows and columns okay so you have tables present in any sql based database so not only that you also have semi structured data sources like xml and uh, json okay so these are basically semi structured data and apart from this you can also connect to no sql based databases okay so you just have to click on jdbc okay okay so here we just have to provide the name okay so since we are using the mysql database so you can write or you can name it whatever you want so let's name it mysql db okay 
and the database adapter in this case will be so if you scroll down okay so let's scroll down a bit so here you will get mysql mysql 5 okay so this is the database adapter and this is the driver class pass IP. and this is the driver class path okay and by default you can see the driver classes on mysql jdbc driver and the database uri okay so the database uri will be it will be specific to your system okay so in this case like you can mention it the local host over here and the default port for your mysql database okay so normally it is 3306 okay so you can change it to anything that you want okay and the name of your database so what is the name of your database so mysql db okay and if you talk about the transaction isolation so database default which is by default present over here and the authentication is use login and password okay so you have to mention the credentials that you use for mysql over here okay so let me mention okay so these are the default login and password that i use for my sql base or mysql database okay and once you do that just have to test the connection okay so this is how you connect to the data source okay so whatever data which is present on your mysql we can fetch it using this connection method or you can say the configuration method okay so this was the first step which is connect okay as of now i'm canceling this okay the second step will be the combined step okay so here we will learn to create a base view and the base view will connect to the data source created in the connect and provide a different variety of operations that can be performed on base views to create derived views okay so how do you create a base view so the first step was connect and now the second step is the combine okay so what we do in combine we create a base view in this section the base view will connect to the data source created in the connect and provide a different variety of operations that can be performed on base views to create derived views so once you create base views or like we have a folder here base views you will create base views over here and after that based on base views you create the derived views okay so what are derived views so derived views are simple views that are created by using single or multiple base views combined with different operations like joins union minus and so on so these are the operations that you perform on a data which you derive from mysql database right you connect to the data source in the previous step so based on that data first you create the base views and then out of those base views you create the derived views okay and the third and the last step in this is consume okay so this principles implementation would make the real time data available to business users or the enterprise applications okay and now we will see how do you create a web service in denodo so for creating a web service what you have to do is you have to right click over here and you have to click on web service i right clicked on this folder web service then i clicked on this new and here you have data source so for it, in this data source you have to select web service okay so you have to name the web service that you want to create okay so let me name it sample ws okay so now we will see how to create a web service in the denodo platform okay so as we have already created a folder of web service over here so we just have to create right click over here and then in the new section you have to click on data service over here okay so these are the two kinds of web services that you can opt for like soap based web service and the rest web service okay 
So let me click on the REST web service over here. Okay, so this is the name. Okay, so once you create this REST web service over here, so these are the tabs that you can see settings, advanced and metadata. Okay, so in the metadata, you have this database through which we are connected, which is a sample database and the folder is web service. Okay, so if you want, you can add the description over here. And in the advanced <coughs> tab, you have the number of rows, which is 1000 by default. Chunk timeout, which is in milliseconds, 90,000. This is also by default. And the query timeout, which is 9 lakh over here. Okay, so this is also by default. So your query. Like if you type any SQL query to fetch the data or to manipulate the data. So the query timeout limit is this much. Okay, so here for XML representation settings. So if you are, you can check this box over here, represent null values as empty elements. Okay, and you can, by default, it was unchecked. So you can check it if you want. Like if you, you can click over here, and then in the settings, you have this resource configuration. Okay. So after the resource configuration, you can see the available representations over here, HTML, XML, JSON, RSS. Okay. And you can check this box, limit the size of responses. Okay. So by default, it was unchecked. You can Click over here if you want. Okay. And the next thing that you can see here is display restful links. Okay. So authentication by default, it's none. And you can select it, whatever you want. So if you select HTTP basic, you have to provide the credentials over here. Okay. So let's stick to none. And once you do that, you just have to save it. Okay, so here it says unable to create a web service, at least one operation must be published. Okay, so we are not doing anything over here. We, we, I just wanted to show you the overall thing of creating a web service. Okay, so once you mention the operation that you have to perform, so for the RESTful web service, so what are the operations that you can do for this web service? You can use, you know, various methods such as such as get put okay so these are the methods that you can use with rest web services then you can also use post or delete so once you create this web service okay once you create and save it what you can do is you can deploy the web service okay so deploying the web service is very simple you just have to right click on the web service and then you have to select the deploy op option okay so this step will deploy the web service and will give you the URL on which the web service is available. Okay, so these are the three crucial steps that Denodo has, which is nothing but connect, combine and consume. Okay, so I think this gives you a basic overview of how Denodo works. Okay, and for web tools, you have this web design studio also. So you can click on start over here and you can create on launch. So for web-based tools, you have this web design studio. Okay, so you have to provide the credentials. Okay, so once you log in using your credentials, you will be able to see the web design studio. Okay, so guys, that was all from my side in this video. I hope you have enjoyed this session and you now have an idea about Denodo and its working. Okay, 
If you have any queries related to this session, then you can write them in the comments box. And my team is here to help you with all your queries. Okay. So thank you so much for being with us and have a good day.